cool. Yeah. Um, how's how's MakerNet going? What's what's your latest on that? Because what I wanted to see is uh, see if there's some overlap. So we're working on these Steam Camps, which is a program designed to teach productive literacy, like really significant skills that, because we focus on scalability and modularity and basic skills that can get people into open source product design. So that's uh, that's where we are with the Steam Camps and also preparing people for incentive challenges, which are for open source product design. So um, that's that's the main thing. I want to see, uh, kind of talk about what's what's the overlap, is there ways we can collaborate? And also, are you interested in, in potentially being an instructor at the camps? Um, on instructors, it's a little difficult at this point in the sense that we're creating the curriculum to to mm -hmm. do that. Like we we did our last Steam camp, and that went pretty well. And that's why we're deciding to really scale that. To, so we're looking at 12 locations worldwide and at the same time. So that's that's the way we're looking at it, since we think that can work. So where are you looking to set? Up? So in 12 different places, wherever we find the instructors. So right now, the, the candidate ah, locations okay. are, yeah, yeah, several cities in the U.S. There's Austria, Belgium, and mm -hmm. no, nothing else yet. But we've got about five or so mm -hmm. people um, that are aligned to, to do this. Uh, but we're looking mm -hmm. for, we're going to need like 12. I'd like to see maybe 12 or 20 or so uh, people collaborate on this and yeah. see where we get get with that <clears throat> yeah that'd be amazing um i know a guy down in i want to say bolivia uh who runs the green pack lab network who would probably be a good person to talk to for uh if you want to scale down there definitely and and there's i definitely was, uh, us putting our heads together would uh would do a bit like do service to the kind of thing you're teaching um, yeah who's the who's the person in bolivia green fab lab uh, his name's Marco Zubieta. Oh, I heard the name. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, definitely want to reach out to him. Um, yeah, if you would mind forward mm -hmm. forward that to him. But what... Yeah, what, yeah of course. And um, yeah. I, I know some folks with who uh, run Fab Labs in, I want to say, Lebanon and Iraq and all over. Um, so you will help you find some people. Mm-hmm. Okay. What are you up to? What's your latest on? Uh, is is um is the MakerNet so, the latest effort, and that's your full time thing right now? Or uh, I wish. Uh, um, so it's been a rough year for MakerNet. Um, uh -huh. My my co founder was killed uh, in June. Oh, is that um, is that so sorry? Huh. Yeah. Uh, on the road on his way to join us at uh, the Nation of Makers event. Um, what happened there? Was and it? And a car accident. Huh. Yeah. I see. Uh, you know, that, that happened sort of right at the same time huh. that uh, the people signing up for MakerNet were spiking and like suddenly we were getting a ton of interest and also running out of money. Mm -hmm. um, so basically where we're at right now is there's been you know, this huge spike of interest in like 35 makerspaces from six countries have all, you know, found us with like no advertising and no outreach. They just mm -hmm. found us and signed up. And so we're, uh, we're kind of struggling to keep up with that and trying to get everything situated and start charging uh, a you know, not nominal membership fee. Mm -hmm. Tell uh, me about the revenue model so for that MakerNet. Can, How are you looking at it? Um, so my understanding is that, you know, out of, out of the entire ecosystem that I'm trying to connect, the, the people in that ecosystem with the least amount of money are the makerspaces. So that's, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm charging a nominal fee to people who are using MakerNet to run their makerspace just so that we can keep the lights on. But the, the revenue model looks like this. Uh, MakerNet's a MakerNet is a hybrid organization. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit uh, with a uh, subsidiary LLC. The nonprofit owns the IP, gives the platform to makerspaces for 
cheap or free. Uh, but the people using those platforms generate this data about who can do what, with what, where, how well, what machines and materials are available, and so on. This capability map. Mm -hmm. um, the that data has parts of it that are person identifiable, and those. Like nothing can be done with that information without the express permission of the user. Uh, and that information doesn't leave the nonprofit. But depersonalized data, uh, which is still very valuable, can be essentially bought from the nonprofit by the for profit, which can then go to uh, sort of outside agencies and sell it as a service for things like workforce development and job training, for things like you know disaster response. There's a whole bunch of projects that I've been working on that would sort of be markets for that. Um, you know, the idea of how, like, you know, assuming the user gives permission, then you can do some really things with, like, helping them get paying work and, you know, skilled trades or manufacturing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but, to, but for any of those to work, you still need the data. And so yeah. the phase one is just getting people to use the platform, which creates the data, and then sort of the other stuff builds on that. Mm -hmm. I see. And where are you at right now? So are you signing people up and, and is that starting to go or? Yeah, yeah, I mean, we've got probably uh, five or six spaces that are active and up and running and like another 20 that are in various stages of setup. Um, you know, we're, we're moving slow because we have limited budget. Uh, I, I've, you know, I've been working on this for four years and I still never paid myself. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been kind of figuring out side jobs so that I can pay my own rent while keeping this going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, are you also part of? Are you also in um, field ready? Is that? Did I see that? Uh, I work pretty closely with field ready. I, I'm not an employee of field ready, but mm -hmm. yeah, they're. They're, they're friends of mine. Uh, we talk a lot, and we've been trying to figure out how to work together on stuff like this for a while. Um, yeah. 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 Um, any thoughts on... Um, so regarding the Steam Cap, is it something I might be interested in doing, or, or is there... I don't know, maybe... Well, I was also going to ask, because some of the stuff we may be able to collaborate on for the MakerNet thing that's missing for me is the high quality open source equipment that's replicable. Um, mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? And also the open source product designs that that can be leveraged to by many maker spaces and so so a collaborative effort to develop those. That's kind of the direction we're going. We're trying to create a viable platform for open source product development that um, a lot of people stand behind and can produce make a living out of it. Absolutely. No, I think it's amazing. Um, I love the, the project you're working on. Uh, so I don't know if you, I don't know if you heard about it, uh, but there was a uh, there was a thing that happened in Warsaw a couple months ago um, that was kind of a, a gathering of like open source hardware distributed manufacturing people, um, Anna Waldman Brown, some other names you might know. Uh, Field Ready was was a big part of it. Uh, what but, was the event called in uh, Warsaw? Do you have do you have a link for that? Uh, no, we didn't have much of a web presence, but it was... Actually, let me see. There might, might have been something. Uh, what was it called? Uh, the Internet of Manufacturing Summit um, by the MakerNet Alliance. And MakerNet Alliance is, is what? That's that's you? or? Um, so, here, let's see. Um, same as it the is Internet. a... No, it's sort of a consortium. There's a handful of us that are all working on related topics. Um, here, let me send you a send you a link. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, there wasn't really we never really got much of a web presence on it. Um, the the point being that uh, I helped put this event together, and uh, a lot of us had talked about trying to get you there. Um, so we wanted specifically your input, but I think for whatever reason, like we didn't have the we didn't have the budget or something like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly, but. Yeah, uh, what do, we've been aware of your work and and uh, yeah, really appreciate what you're doing uh, in terms of like teaching these um, 
teaching these st uh, STEM camps, that would be amazing. I'd be, I'd be super into it. Um, and I know a couple of the people here who would love to as well. Here, that's on uh, the internet, or, or where? Uh, like here is in the Bay Area. Oh, Bay Area, okay, yeah. Yeah. Um... Let's see, so, um, have you taken a look at the actual, let's see, did you, can you paste the link you were going to paste, can you paste that in the chat? Do you see the chat at the bottom left? Oh yeah, let me find that. Uh, I wanted to show you maybe some of this, um, like how it works, it's probably, did you see the link on how, how the Steam camps work? Uh, this one. Uh, did you see that? Did you take a look at that yet? Hang on. Uh, I did look at the... Sorry, I'm looking for the chat. Oh, there it is. Yeah, okay. bottom left. Um. Make an alliance, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's sort of... Th there's enough of us who have been working on similar and related things that we put together this kind of ad hoc umbrella group just to describe what we're all working on together. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at the... I looked at the a different page. I looked at a, a thing on the Steam camps, but it wasn't the how it works. Let me okay. skim through this really quick. Yeah, skim through that. Um, Take a look at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I looked at the curriculum. That's what it was. Um, About how much do you tend to charge for these? I imagine it varies from place to place. So Say again? 1350, 1350 would be the price ticket on a nine-day camp when you get to you get to take home the three-in-one machine and the and the products we make out of that. Uh, like Got for it. example, the uh, Raspberry Pi tablet. That's we're looking at that as the first first camp, Raspberry Pi tablet, mm -hmm. and some education around that. Okay. Yeah. Um. So actually, this might be a, a perfect thing. Um. So there's a there's a space that in the Bay Area that's relatively new. Uh -huh. uh, the link. Um, uh, I'm I'm uh, affiliated with a number of maker spaces in the Bay, but Human Made, uh, out of all of the ones that are still around, because a lot of the big ones have shut down, but of the ones that are still around, they're they're new, they're well funded, uh, they're they're kind of like platonic ideal of a, a big city maker space. They're really good. Um, and I've got basically every tool you can imagine. So it has a, and a lot of space, and they specifically do classes there. Um, and they're pretty new? Uh, yeah, they just opened up a few months ago. Now who's behind that? Ryan Spurlock. He used to be the general manager of uh, Tech Shop SF. Okay. Yeah. And was, uh, is there revenue model of membership, or how or are they just what a... Yeah, no, they, they're, their model's membership, but I was going to say um, they might be a really good place to, to teach this out of, mm -hmm. um, just because they've got a lot of space and a lot of really, like, uh, a lot of good equipment, which obviously you don't need a ton to do this thing, but, like, they're, they're set up for running classes, and they do, they already have a lot of workforce development uh, connections with the city already. Like they've got people coming in and putting in hundreds of hours just sort of learning, you know, CAD and basic stuff. So the I imagine huh. if we wanted to teach us something like this there, we wouldn't have to go drum up a ton of extra business. That's cool. Uh, so four to eight week job training programs, they already run that? Yeah. Hmm, that's pretty cool. And what kind uh, specifically? What 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 are they uh, training people on? More traditional skills, or so, just pretty cutting edge stuff, or what are they doing? Um, I haven't I haven't done a deep dive into what they're teaching. It's been from what I've seen, it's a mix of you know uh, kind of CAD skills. Like they they're set up to teach basically everything from you know metalwork, woodwork, mm -hmm. CAD, three D printing, the whole bit. Um, yeah. I think their their course is mainly on. Uh, like manufacturing skills, so the kind of the full pipeline from uh, full pipeline from you know CAD design through you know an actual prototype. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so for something like what we're talking about here, this that would likely be a really good you know yeah. addendum or something like that. Uh, if you go to the website, I think you you should be able to. There should be something on their training program. Let me see. Yeah. Uh, but in any case, I have, I have some connections there. Uh -huh. um, and so if I come to them and say, hey, I'm, I'm looking to teach this course. Can I teach it here? Can we partner on this? Uh, that's, that's very likely. OK. Um, and, I, and you know, I know a bunch of other ones in the Bay Area where that could be done, so we can kind of move it around. Um, you know, my, my main question is, you know, looking at the uh, looking at the curriculum, yeah, like I can definitely teach some of this, uh, and between me and kind of like my local maker friends, we can kind of put our heads together and be like, okay, we, you know, between all of us, we know how to do this more or less. Uh, but I would love to figure out how I can like properly get up to speed and feel a little more confident teaching that curriculum because it's very specific and and pretty intense. Well, that's the whole deal. We're we're spending a time up front to learn that, so we collaborate on drawing mm -hmm. that up with the 12 to 24 okay. um, instructors and then it's about rapid mm -hmm. learning from each other so we we meet a couple of times to cross teach mm -hmm. and then we got to build out the other person's prototypes like for example for the pen the plotter you know eventually we send you all like the say the person that develops that and makes it work well ship it to us we quality control it and then ship out the kits to everybody so we're ready for mm -hmm. the event so there's a three-month development cycle per event i mm -hmm. mean that's right now for the first mm -hmm. one and then uh, for the next ones it's going to be easier but right now it's kind of a uh, more heavy lifting at this point um but the idea is yes absolutely a part of the attraction here is you get to, into some rapid learning from people who are in the know so that's to me, that's a great value proposition because I could spend the next year figuring all this out. I could get a crash mm -hmm. course in a few weeks, you know. Okay, interesting. That's um, that's the model. Uh, it's a it's a constant learning model. So we're kind of uh, joining a mastermind of individuals who are interested in uh, creating this and learning. And eventually, uh, so the idea is that each camp leads up to uh, realistic. Development. So we start with something like, okay, say we take the drone, right? Initially, it might be just the drone, mm -hmm. but with with successive events, we make it into an AI computer vision drone that plants our aquaponic towers. You know, it, so mm -hmm. realistic product development. We we push it along a little bit every time and involve new people. Like, say we wanted to add the CV AI to it. Well, we need to find somebody that wants to work with us on that and, and publish all the results open source. So it's it's hardcore open source to mits I mean, for me, the bit one of the biggest gaps and you know the promise since okay, when was the b book Fab written uh, by Gershenfeld? Uh, that was like what twenty? Oh, two thousand one? I mean, that was like or, yeah. I was gonna say it was like at least twelve years ago. But yeah, like a decade or more. two ago. But nothing, in my view, like yeah. nothing in that has happened in in, a, in any significant way. It's like where are the repositories of open design? That's you know, I look at all these yeah. projects. And no, exactly. That was. Nobody's that's, doing it. That's a huge part of what I've been working on. Right. So we got to okay, uh, we got to do that. Uh, so how yeah. do we collaborate on that? So this this could be a way. But um, how have you been working on that? Like uh, uh, any initiatives on that as far as the repositories of design at working replicable products or anything? So on uh, one of the big things that we uh, we really focused on in um, in this video? Warsaw event, if you. By the way. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I think I. Hi. Uh, yeah, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in this event in Warsaw that uh, we put on back in July, uh, one of the big one of the big things was specifically bringing together a lot of people working on open source hardware. This is you know researchers and developers and and so on, um, to not just you know, create yet another repository of instructables, but actually to really create a truly universal uh, like data model and framework for open source hardware so that, you know, any arbitrarily complicated machine could kind of be represented in this. Uh, and started the you know, the Open Know How Working Group, which has persisted since then and is continuing to, uh, to go. And I think we've got 
have to go back and check because I haven't been oh, trying to get closely. Oh, the know-how working so. group? Yeah. Well, that's, um, I mean, that's, that's kind of stuff about taxonomies, data models for this. I mean, that's that's my uh, core interest of what, what I'm trying to get out there. Yeah, actually. Let me see if I can, um, I'm going to make a note to myself because I want to dive down a rabbit hole while I'm talking to you, but I'll, I'm going to make a note to find the working group mailing list and add you to it. Um, Um, alternately, there's a there's sort of a regular, like, I think every two week or every month group call of the people working on that, um, and I can try to invite you to that as well. Okay. Um, but so, the, you know, that, that data model is kind of like, has a, has a stable V1 release as of pretty recently. Um, once that's a little bit more robust, then all of the various groups that have kind of come together to work on this, which is like, Carables and Enable and Field Ready and a whole bunch of other groups that deal with open source hardware, sort of for you know projects within their domain. We're going to start kind of putting it all into a pile using this taxonomy and trying to build it all out based on that. So there's there's some progress being made for sure. Um, the yeah yeah there's some there's some cool stuff happening. I just haven't been watching it very closely because I've been trying to deal with you know the fires in my own yard. Mm -hmm. and, um, but yeah, one of the one of the things that I really want to see happen is well, so like the the project that I was um, like in the grant cycle for up until like two days ago when I when I lost it. It's been kind of bitter about it to, since the since the weekend, but um, was trying to basically create a system that would connect uh, open source plans for, so like basic utility and humanitarian designs with you know, uh, capability of mapping, capability mapping of people and essentially like a text bot that would connect people who, you know, after a disaster, connect people nearby who are doing okay, who have skills with places to build them and designs to get things that are needed to people who are in the disaster area. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that kind of stuff is what I've been working on. Uh, I just lost the grant for that a couple days ago, and so I've been kind of trying to figure out what happens next. Mm -hmm. But all that is to say, uh, I'm definitely excited about, about working with you and figuring out how to make this happen. And the uh, the main thing I'll need to juggle is the time, like figuring out what the kind of time commitment time commitment is for getting up to speed on this and designing the curriculum uh, relative to the other things that I have going. But if I can make it work, I'm super interested. Okay, um, so if you look at specifically the nine day curriculum, which parts do you think? Because there, there's some prototypes to be done there. Mm -hmm. if you take a Let's look see. At it, so. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. So yeah, I'm looking at it now. Um, so so the idea is uh, we've got the universal access, universal controller. That's pretty good. Um, circuit plotter and CNC mill. Circuit plotter. We need somebody to do the pen holder and a technique for the etching that's reliable to make electro simple mm -hmm. electronics, like making an Arduino Uno. Uh, mm -hmm. With the basic plotting, circuit plotting, and also drawing, we can create. Mm -hmm basic electronics so big deal is would be like printed motor then a little bit of electronics like a battery charger scalable battery mm -hmm. packs so we're going to be building battery packs mm -hmm. uh, which if you stack 12 of them together you can have a cordless welder so that will be the universal controller plus basic little power electronics circuit plus some arduino code gets you a cordless welder from battery packs so you can actually show that in the first four that's like the first four days going that's forward. amazing the graphics. So yeah, it's like power packed. You get like basic fabrication machines that you're literally like starting to build from scratch. Because the 3D printed motor, we want to for the first event, we want to put that on um, universal axis to to create a basic circuit mill. So actually, a milling thing that where we built the motor, and you can, you can do that. There's people that build these axial flux 3D printed electric motors that can work. They'll be a little mm -hmm. larger, but they'll be actually very still very efficient. So, I mean, 
as feasible. Uh, so that's that. But I mean, is there anything that, if you take a look at the details of day one through four, uh, that, because essentially, well, what are the roles that we have? So let me show you a graphic of what we have specifically already uh, for the, the task. So let me paste this into the chat. Um, let's take a look at the chat. That's what we got. Um, the second page shows I just broke that down very granular into tasks. So, okay, mm -hmm. 3D printer, circuit plotter, motor, CNC mill, cordless welder, Arduino. The drone will replace that by the Pi tablet because um, we found a guy who, who's into Pi tablets. Um, mm -hmm. But that's the Yale, Yale Fox, and Ted Fellow friend is going to work on a Pi tablet there. But. Um, that's who we have so far. We've got only a few people. There's like, yeah. Got it. Okay, so, so you're you're basically trying to find people who can kind of commit to figuring out how, you know, a piece of this works, and then sort of bringing it back to the group. Exactly. Okay. Um, how many of these things have actually been prototyped and exist? Okay. Um, Everything exists between our project and other projects. So to be specific mm -hmm. on that, let me show you the open source prior art. So if you take a look at, that's a good question. That's that's right there. Click on that. So all this kind of stuff has been done. Whether it's us, I mean, we do the universal axis and D three D. We call that call our stuff D three D distributed three D. Mm -hmm. Um. But you click on each of those, that's different people. But I couldn't get any of these. I actually tried getting a bunch of these people, but I either like didn't get a response or too busy, um, mm -hmm. which was actually surprising because I was like, okay, this is awesome. We're going to just populate this really quickly. But it's taken way longer than, than I would think. So I got to up my skill mm -hmm. in recruiting here is the thing. Um, do you know the Nation of Makers group? Um, yeah, I heard about it, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know people there. Uh, I'm I'm pretty deeply involved in Nation yeah. Makers. Uh, if if you want to, uh, let's see. I know you you have a a web page on here that's like the call for help. Yeah, I think there's, I saw. A, there's a super long blog uh, it, post that people are saying that's way too long and too technical. But that's the blog post there. Okay, and, tell you what. Let's let's. Let's figure out how to turn the blog post into like a one-page call to action yeah. that if people are interested in, they can go look at the blog post or something like that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then I, I can send that out to the entire Nation of Makers group. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we can probably get you a lot more help. Uh, so here, let's see. So, okay, so if I'm understanding this correctly, um, so every one of these things in here that's, that's like, you know, here the the universal access CNC, mm -hmm. for example. Um, you know, this has this has concept art. This has build instructions. It has bill of materials. It has CAD files. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so none none of what you're looking for is invent a thing that does this. What you're looking for is someone who is capable of taking these plans and actually building one, and then walking someone else through the same process. Right. Ideally, it would okay. be the people that have like done that. Like for example, for the axial motor, which is axial flux motor. I mean, it's you know you're gonna have to play around with it. So ideally, you'd get the guy that did it. And there's a right. couple on the internet, but I couldn't get it. Get those. Get at those people. Mm -hmm. um, so we either search, I mean, I'm still searching more, like I, I'm still in the process, like just getting, pro I'm really going at the route of getting professional designers and hiring some people if we're really missing something. So, cause we, we want to get this rolling. I know it's really difficult to get the curriculum and some of the technology up, you know, mm -hmm. you're doing the prototypes at the same time. So that's, I think a big block because it does like for you to start from scratch, say to do the electric motor, uh, 3D printed, um, it's going to take some time. So we're going to need to probably throw some resource at it 
and make it happen so it's easier because th that's the kind of feedback I've been getting actually it's like dude this is like a five-legged dog there's too many things in here uh, that you mm -hmm. gotta do up front um, so what might be thoughtful uh, looking at this this whole process hmm. is breaking it down into a little bit more of a like like break it down a little to a slightly finer grained parts and stretch them out a little bit more. Uh, what what you're describing, it sounds like if I'm following correctly, is you know you've got this really amazing curriculum that you want to teach, and you're trying to recruit the the people who are gonna really make it happen. Yeah. Um, but it's what's not clear yet, and this may exist, but you just haven't told me about it. But what's not clear is sort of what is the what is the structure that holds all of this and all the people who come into it, and what is sort of what is the incentive for people to get involved? Um, you know, like if I come in and as a teacher, for example, am I part of a cooperative? Am I a contractor? Uh, like, what level of ownership do I have over this? You know, like these are these are questions everyone's going to have. Uh, and laying out that structure and making it really clear, I think, will be very helpful. Right. I attempted that at, at the um, how it works. Let's see how much of that do I have. So I put basically like instructor duties and OSC duties. So um, let's see. Did you get to the how it works instructor duties and OSC duties? Because in OSC duties, first item is coordinating the development process of the STEAM camps. And I, I should build on that and setting up. Where is where is the duties part? I'm not seeing it. Okay. Sorry, there's, I have a bunch of links open for me now. Yeah, um, that's the link. Let's see. Um, the first link I sent you, how it works. Did you see I that see. first link? Yeah, yeah. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, here we go. What I'm not saying in there okay. is that, yeah. let's see, the let's see in a, in a larger picture, no, I actually didn't say it, and I think I should say it, but the idea is that what we want to do is actually create an open source franchise. What that means is that, mm -hmm. okay, so at first we're doing this, we're doing, OSC's doing a lot of the development work, um, or it's a 50-50 revenue share. Now, if you want to go mm -hmm. on your own, where we are minimally involved, but you basically buy the brand like Coca-Cola or mm -hmm. McDonald's. You can do it, and therefore you, you're you running it, and we're getting a cut for the purpose of maintaining the organization to continue training, to continue product R&D, and so forth. So if it's valuable to you that we're developing new products, open sourcing everything, creating a, an infrastructure where the products can be rolled out in a meaningful way, that's that's what we do and run an open source franchise to do that. Uh, so that's the later phase where we're, we're not there yet. Right now we're at the 50-50 revenue share kind of looking for uh, partners to develop this. And being open source, like it's, you know, we're very uh, clear about that. I mean, it's radically open source on the organizational level, business level, product level. So we're not hiding any secrets. The incentive is that you're doing this for the greater good. Right. We're not trying to capture a market. Mm -hmm. We're trying to distribute a market. In fact, very opposite. And we call this distributed enterprise, an organization which, whose business is in business to get other people in business, but fully collaborative open source. So that's that's the tr that's the thing. We're interested in. That's awesome. Transfer. I love it. <laughs> say, say again. I said that's awesome. I love it. Yeah. Um, we're a about of, a historic oh. transfer of wealth from the few to the many. Yeah. Are you familiar at all with the, the Mondragon model? Yes, I am. They're closed source. Doesn't count. <laughs> yes, they've got a co-op, but the co-op model is limited in a, it's still a proprietary consortium for outsiders. So yeah, sure. I like yeah, it. No, no. 
Uh, no, I mean, I, I agree. I think it's it's an, I think it's been a step in the right direction, but I think yeah, uh, like I've been looking at for a while, like how do you make something like the Mondragon Federation of Worker on Co-ops model, which is you know which is great for what it is, but how do you take it further? Yeah. Uh, and the answer so, is simple in concept, but hard to execute, and that's just be making it open source and collaborative. Um, right. Yeah. Th uh, that's the current attempt but, what we're trying to do here. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's pretty amazing. Uh, so... So maybe, like, hmm. you know, just thinking about it out loud, like, cooperative, mm -hmm. uh, there's... The next step on that is clearly open source co cooperative or... Yeah, I mean, just add those two words in front of cooperative and it, and it has a chance, but nobody figure out a business model to make it work, and that's that's what we're working on. Uh, so, by the way, the bigger picture still is, okay, so next year, September 2020, mm -hmm. we're aiming to run a, an incentive challenge on Hero X. Do you know Hero X? No. Um, okay, just Google HeroX.com. Um, it's an incentive platform that is a spinoff of the X Prize. We're going to run a yeah. challenge there to, to build the world's first open source 3D printed professional grade cordless drill. We're going to put up a $250,000 bounty and as mm -hmm. a result intend to create a bunch of small enterprises that produce these. So mm -hmm. one, on one level it's you've got the open product design but also it's made from trash so we are including the um, plastic recycling as part of that challenge with the intent to actually fuel like hardware stores like we actually want to go to hardware stores so we're going to work on that see if any of the big box stores want to collaborate with us uh so we're working on that but the, we're aiming to launch that september 2020 the steam camp relevance is that you learn all the open source tool chains necessary to to collaborate in a in a large scale open way so that's that's kind of our mm -hmm. our deal awesome yeah um but well, that's yeah, really cool looking at that now um, yeah, so that's our that's our cunning plan. Basically, steam camps to educate people, and incentive challenges to develop a real product. Because one of the learnings has been it's wow, it's a heroic effort to develop a product fully, and that taxonomy, like you're talking about, that is critical that no one has uh, hacked yet. But those are gaps that need to be addressed. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, So, I mean, I realize this is sort of, this is kind of a, a side project, um, but just because I'm still, I'm still thinking about it, I'm gonna drop this out here. Uh, so, a lot of this stuff I've been, here, I'm really dedicated to you, there you are. Um, so, I'm, one of the things that I do uh, kind of outside of my maker world as a, like one of the things I do for money is, uh, is DevOps. You know, where you, you define the entire state of a you know computer system as code, and then you version that code. So instead of having to do a bunch of manual command line stuff, you just you know upload a new config file to GitHub, and then it you know reconfigures the entire hardware and like infrastructure of the system, but in that way that is versioned and controlled and sort of uh, hardware and uh, infrastructure of the system. Code. How how is that? Uh, how do you do that? So. Um, Using systems like you know Docker and Kubernetes and, and, and a whole bunch of other sort of things in that ecosystem, you can say, all right, I want to run this this software on you know this operating system with all these parameters, and I want to you know scale it to eight of them that all use the, this IP configuration, blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. But all of that is defined in documents, which you you know basically you just like commit to GitHub and have a system that watches that says, oh, there's a new version of this thing. Spin down the old machines, spin up the new machines. Okay, okay. I thought you were yeah. talking about some other hardware product development other than the back ends, like the basically server infrastructures, and that's called DevOps. Yeah, yeah, development operations. But so the 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 thing that comes to mind when talking about open source yeah. uh, cooperative structure is that the you can almost do it the same way. The you know, the structure of any organization, especially a yeah. co-op, tends to have a fairly straightforward bit of text that defines how it runs. To make that open source, you're literally just saying, okay, anyone can fork this, 
if you want to merge it back in, there's some process that allows, you know, essentially like there's a review process and then we make a, you know, we make a poll and we say, okay, this is now part of the master branch of this cooperative's bylaws. Yeah. You know, oh, you're running a fork of the bylaws that is, you know, makes you semi-compatible with us, but we can't do these things together. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's, wouldn't actually be that hard to implement that side, that side of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's exciting. That's def yeah, definitely. Uh huh. And so is the group on um, talking about the working the MakerNet Alliance people that open the oh, yeah. working group is are they tackling that or is that how they're treating it? Um, uh, no, so the open know how. Uh, I'm just gonna find where that is. So the open know how group is much more focused on. Um, so, like the data model that says, uh, oh, let's see, you missed it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. The, the last working group call was on the 13th. I'll, I'll see if I can get you into the next one. Um, but so, the, what they're mostly focused on is, you know, sort of agreeing on a, a format for a, essentially a manifest. So, like, in your thing here where you've got uh, these wiki files that say, okay, you know, you, What's a this is all of the things. Sorry, what? What's a manifest? Uh, so, under here, under your, your prior art, mm -hmm. where you've got, you know, this, this wiki page that says, like, here's the CAD, here's the bill of materials, here's the code, here's the, you know, images and so on. Uh, you know, your goal in making these was that every single thing that you could possibly need to go from zero to complete mm -hmm. is on this page. So, a manifest is essentially a a format for a file that that would contain all of that same information uh, without actually, but but still that would be small. That would essentially just be a text file because it would be links to these images and these build materials and these other things. And the the goal is that the manifest you know is this very lightweight thing that can be sent around very quickly. Yeah, and it's just you know links to all these things, but that there's also a function where you can essentially build the manifest and it will reach out across those links and pull the images and pull the lists and pull the CAD files and build an archive on your local system. Mm -hmm. uh, but that if you, you know, say because the manifest would be open source, if you say, okay, well, I'm going to go in and change the manifest and like link it to, you know, this, this updated bill of materials or change the image or whatever, then that, like one, it's version and it remembers what it used to be and remembers what was changed and who changed it. But now you can just say like, all right, you know, build the newest version, and it will pull from the updated things. That's that's kind of the idea of the open source or the open know how project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, and do they have established like any repositories that are are these places where the assets are found? I mean, I think it seems like the first thing that's missing is the actual actual content. Is that? So or uh, so there's a, um, I mean, so there's a number of repos out there already of open source hardware contents that are kind of, in, you know, in these various domains. Uh, but for the most part, none of them can talk to each other because there's not they're not sharing this file format yet. The format itself is still in development. Uh, but yeah, I have to go back in and check because I haven't been keeping really active with, with it for a while. Uh, but. Last I knew, they were expecting to have a, um, you know, like a demo of what's currently up and running, like at the last meeting. I just missed the last meeting, uh, but I'm. I feel like there is definitely something out there. Uh, tell me about the the open hardware repos. I mean, things like what are you talking about? Things like Thingiverse or. Um. Let's see if I can find. Um, so, let's see, you, so like one of, like one of them that's a, uh, um, good open hardware hub that I'm calling for, um, prosthetics specifically is, um, the enable, um, groups. So I think it's like, uh, let me pull the link. Do, they do mostly like open source medical prosthesis 
Um, got any all sanity link. Mm -hmm. um, I know Feel Ready kind of keeps their own repo. Uh, let's see. So, like the link you sent, I mean, um, is the actual hardware repo there, or is I'm seeing the I, the forum? Yeah, is it there let's somewhere? see. Here we go. Uh, sorry. Do uh, if you go, I believe this is it. Did you send? Let me see. Let's see. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what other ones we have there in this good okay. ones, but it's been a minute. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And who's behind Enable? I don't know. Um, let's see. Oh, do you know about, um, what is this, uh, Apropedia? Yeah. So uh, they were there, and they, you know, they're an excellent example. They have a, a ton of plans, but it's kind of a pain in the ass to find them. So they're sort of scattered throughout this giant wiki that may or may not actually have plans on any given page. Um, you know, but they have, I think they said something like, out of, you know, their 10,000 pages on this site, they have, you know, probably 8,000 or so, like, or maybe 800 or so, like, actual working plans that you can put into this format, but they're just, they're kind of scattered around. Uh, so yeah, again, like I said, I have to come check back in with the group, uh, but the, as I understand it, they're, they're making some pretty good progress, and I think getting getting your, your OSE stuff kind of put into that format would be a big win for everybody. Definitely. What's your current uh, main endeavor? Like, what are you working on right now? Um, I honestly, right now, I, I kind of hit a wall after losing my co-founder and all that funding. Um, I'm I'm trying to guide MakerNet as a, a sort of to the point where it can be self-sustaining. Uh, which I think it can get to in the next couple of months, um, but I'm I kind of need to focus on stuff that actually pays me right now, uh, which there hasn't been enough of in a while. So I'm I'm working at a robotics startup in San Francisco, doing a bunch of like prototyping with you know 3D printing and vacuum forming and some SolidWorks and you know and, and basically it's kind of like getting paid to be a maker, which is fun, but. Um, the thing that we're building is sort of stupid. And I don't actually care about it. Uh, you know, the the world doesn't need another fucking digital assistant. Um, but you know, it pays. It pays San Francisco startup money, which is what I need right now. Um, and then you know that and some DevOps work on the side. Mm -hmm. I just need some time to be a mercenary. Um, what's what's uh startup pay what is it um, like 50 100 bucks an hour yeah i mean one of my coworkers is getting okay 105 an hour all right uh, is that how much are you getting for the prototyping work um we're in the process of renegotiating because they they asked me to come in and basically just be like a 3d printer monkey and just kind of babysit a machine and then I came in and I'm like, well, 
I can do that and you know, you can pay me thirty bucks an hour and I'll I'll hang out for a bit, but really you need like a prototyping operations lead because you have no operationalized systems at all and you need like you need way more than just someone to hook it up and sheet. So you're gonna we're gonna renegotiate my contract in a few weeks after we kind of hit this one mark and I'm gonna ask for a hundred. But I mean, I've also done product management and project management and Good Design suggestion. Stuff, so, so, if if we're gonna hire out any people to do the some of the prototyping for the uh, the Steam Camp, do you have suggestions on mm -hmm. that? So, who would I go? Oh with? yeah. So, uh, so I have one friend out here that I I mentioned, um, I mentioned when you had reached out to me, uh, and I was like, oh my god, check out this open source ecology project. Look at this this thing. Uh, and she got super excited about it. So, do you know uh, a makerspace called Artisans Asylum? I've heard of it. Yeah. So uh, my friend Guy from Megabots started Artisans Asylum. Uh, and then Echo, who was like, uh, one of the first people there when they opened up, basically saw it starting to like crash and burn because it wasn't actually well organized. And she kind of stepped in and said, like, OK, this is how you're going to run this, and like made it the sort of thriving, successful thing it is. Uh, and she was the highest rated instructor on every single machine they had there. Uh, she's recently moved out here, and is also working at a you know tech startup because that's what you do. Um, but yeah, I, I, she's the first person I would have to get on this with me. Um, and I like I know a bunch of other folks in the area that I could talk to who I think would be pretty good. I know a guy up in Portland named David Dowling who's a folks at Arts and Asylum. Uh, I think he wants someone in Portland. He he was part of the ADX crew, which was like the, the really big, awesome makerspace there. They shut down recently, but he's still pretty well connected into the, the Portland maker scene. Um, yeah. I've got folks that... Well, okay, so here... here uh, do you know who Anna Walton Brown is? No. Uh, she's, she's out of MIT, uh, and a lot of her... Master's thesis work was on like redistributed manufacturing and the maker movement. Uh, and as part of her thesis, she put together this project called the Atlas of Innovation. It was basically designed to aggregate all of the various incomplete maps of maker spaces around the world mm -hmm. into something remotely like one map to rule them all. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you go to atlasofinnovation.com, you can find it. Uh, she handed that project over to me. Uh, so that MakerNet could run it after she graduated. Uh, but what that means is that I have, you know, I have an open source map of all the makerspaces in the world that is, you know, far from perfect in terms of data, but it is closer than anything anyone else has. Um, and I've got pretty deep channels into uh, Nation of Makers and, and some other international groups. So if we need to find people, I think I can help you find people. This is the point of that story. You know, I've, I've been spending the last four years trying to organize people in, around the world and to like build this fucking system. And while I had limited success building the system, I've had a lot of success connecting with people. Mm -hmm. What What do I need to do next? So what I, next that what I was going to do is provide like you saw the graphic with the with the purple. I think what I need to do is probably get a more detailed spec and start attaching mm -hmm. names and and uh, I think numbers like a budget for development I think it's probably what what I'd need to do if we want to get this developed on schedule here um, yeah what I would say is um, are you familiar with Airtable no uh, I'll send you a, an invite link it's it's free for for the scale of what you're talking about um, but it's basically like uh, if you know Google Sheets had a, a love child with a, a relational database, uh, uh -huh. so you can have you can have much more complicated uh, and sort of like data type aware spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'll uh, tell you what I'll take some time to okay. Um, I'll take some time a little later to. Do a, like a quick mock up of what I'm thinking in your table and invite you to it so you can kind of see what I'm visualizing and if that will work for you. Um, like, what is it to represent all this in a better way? 
you're saying? Yeah, to represent, to represent this information on slide two in your yeah. Steam Cam product ecology, uh, to represent that information in such a way that you can capture the the people who you have lined up for it, as well as like all of their contact information and location mm -hmm. and requirements, um, that you can link all of the the necessary pieces to each project and actually have them all be you know links that you can access within this file. Mm -hmm. um, that you can have budget information, that you can have like what stage of the process is this thing at now, what are the next steps. You can have all of that in one document uh, that's shareable and interactive. Uh-huh. And well, what's that platform that called? Uh, Airtable.com. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, I, I use it a lot. It's, it's, a, it's a really good free tool. Cool. Yeah, I'm looking at the Crowdsource Satellite's community innovation spaces. So Anna did, did all of that? She uh, put that together? Or uh, She put the, the first generation of it together, um, and then me and the, the MakerNet team put in probably about three months of coding on it as well. Uh, I think good. the next big thing. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, by the way, if How you want to see where... Uh, if you want to see where things are at with MakerNet in terms of like what a live instance looks like, uh -huh. um, you can go to here. I'll send you. You go to that link. That should take you to one of our our more active spaces. Uh, and there's a there's a whole bunch of features that are not that you're not going to see because you're not logged in as an admin. Mm -hmm. But there's, you know, uh, like the, the total number of features is about double of what you can see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's, it's still pretty basic. It's not pretty, but it does the job for the most part. Yeah. So let's see, so what I do, put the stuff into Airtables and uh, use that to help help the organization a bit? That's what would you suggest? Well, so uh, since I have a, a specific idea on this, let me let me start up a quick Airtable for mm -hmm. you later today. I've got some work that I need to get, get to, okay. but um, I'll just do a quick sketch of like, here's okay. where I think the data should go and kind of how it should fit. Um, and you know you're, you're free to, to do whatever you want with that, um, but if but because I've worked with this tool before, it might save some time, and I'll, I'll kind of lay that out, and okay. then you can start filling in the, the details. Uh, and I think I think the the next steps will emerge from that because once you lay it out in a slightly more spaced out relational way, the the next steps will be kind of obvious. Um, and as I'm going through it, and I kind of start to see where the gaps are, I can maybe offer some some advice on that. Uh, considering me definitely interested in being a teacher and knowing a bunch of other potential teachers, um, as, as I talk to Echo is going to be the first person I talk to about this, and, and as we kind of uh, pull things apart, we're, I'm going to come back to you with questions and say like, okay, we need to know, you know, like for example, if this is you know uh, like 80 hours of front loaded work before we can start teaching a course, you know, is there any budget for that, or are we kind of like right. doing this? You know, pro bono because we're going to get paid for the course when we teach it. Like mm -hmm. having having some, and then being able to take all of that information and saying like, here's an FAQ with the with the questions that you probably have reading this. Here's the answers, and like if you can at least get some some structure on that. So you, if someone is interested in being a teacher, you know, like top ten things that they're going to want to know right there front and center, that'll be helpful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think probably uh, how it works. I need to update that. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. So I'll I'll work on that. I'll work on breaking down. Yeah. See the air tables and see how that leads to further work and how we make this clear, and mm -hmm. go from there. But yeah, definitely like uh, attaching specific names to tasks. And what I'll do is I'll do a rough budget of what I think it would take, uh, based on that. And I don't know. I mean, can you see? 
beyond the purple stuff, I mean, what's your comment on it? I try to break up. Okay, so there's in bubbles, there's like build instructions, the actual build, mm -hmm. um, like basically like items of development. And then on top of that is instructions and curriculum, right? I mean, do right. you see like in general, like what's, what's missing there? Like if I'm going to attach, like say we wanted to do this really fast, we had some money to do it. How much, um, um, how do we break that up? How, how do we break, break that, that up? up? Any comments on that? Any comments on that? Yeah, so I'm looking at it now. So I'm looking at it now. Um, let's see, let's see. So part of it, okay, this, okay, sorry, I'm getting an echo. I'm getting an echo. I'm getting an echo. Mute that cool. guy who just I'll appeared there. Just appeared yeah, Michelle, hold on a sec. We'll be right back. Right. Yep. <laughs> yep, we got uh, another call okay. right now. But so, no worries. Uh, so I'm pulling up the the prior art, and this gives a better uh, better view of what the actual process is. Mm -hmm. So for each uh, for each thing, uh, you know, the instructions, like it's listed at the top, but really it kind of comes last, because you have to go through all of these processes mm -hmm. yourself and say, like, okay, this is, this is what actually needs to happen, and now I can write instructions around what I've done. Uh, you know, there's, uh, let's see. So for each thing, you're going to have, you know, you're going to have your bill of material that you need to order ahead of time. So you're going to need to know what you're working with. You're going to have, in, se in several of these cases, you're going to have um, outputs from previous workshops that now feed into the inputs. And I've, you you mapped some of those with arrows. Though I think, like, one, it's really impressive you fit all of this on one page. Right, but I think right. what I would do is I would actually, like, um, space this out off of a one-page format and uh, so that it's not like lines aren't passing through other things or there's yeah. there's more room for it to breathe and you can kind of see it um, and but work it left to right in terms of time where you're like okay what are the things that you know everything depends on and you've done this a little bit in page one where you're like okay universal controller you know it only the only inputs it has are the Arduino Uno um, so it seems like an Arduino Uno you kind of need to bootstrap so you start with one of those even if later on you can actually build your own, um, if you have if you have ones that are already built out of the DIY circuit plotter, uh, then great, you can feed those into future models. But to start, you like looking at those things. We're like, okay, what is a what's an input that I can't make the first time that I have to buy for the first round, but that I can make the second round? Um, identifying those. So, so Mark, you know, and that doesn't seem like. Super owners, like, like a DC power source and Arduino, you know, not a whole lot else, based on basic tools, um, but getting a really clear list of those things, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and you know, and even even delineating, like if, you know, Arduino, you know, I would say like you know the thing that the thing that you're making later on should be something called should be called something different, and so you can say, all right, Arduino Uno is the off-the-shelf part I bought from Arduino, and that goes before step one as a requirement. And then, you know, output of step four, where we've got this DIY circuit plotter, is going to be, yeah. you know, like OSE Arduino or something like that. But like, it, 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 it is a different thing. Yeah, um, yeah, I can, I can start, start breaking this down. This is just like the start of that. So yeah, I can definitely break it down like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. So... Outputs, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, I, I I do this sort of this similar kind of systems thinking like okay, map all the inputs and outputs, mm -hmm. um, uh, but it's yeah I, f for that process to work, you really have to spread everything out and give it a lot of space to sort of draw things without feeling like aesthetically constrained, right. and then you revise it a few times until you can kind of compress it again. Um, but if you try to draw it in a compressed state, it gets really messy. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, And so then, okay, so there's a, there's a few ways to do this. There's, uh, am I understanding correctly that so each of these dotted boxes, the circuit plotter, the drone, the 3D printer, et cetera, uh, each of those is one of these nine-day courses? Or are they all included within the total nine-day course and you're trying to do all of them? Yeah, this, some is, this is all nine. This is first four days, then the five project days. On the first page, page one that you see on my screen right now, 
Uh, right. This is highly modular uh, XYZ axis with interchangeable tool heads. So it's like SnapMaker, mm -hmm. basically, the open source version, right. you know, SnapMaker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, one is a 3D printer tool head, another is a circuit plotter, and another one is the mill head. So yeah, this, this is like jam-packed into this intense four-day boot camp, and then you get the five project days. Okay. Yeah. Um, out of curiosity, uh, like how how married do you how married are you to that format? Uh, and no, have uh, you? Been? It's got to be anything that works. I mean, right now it's like spent a bit of time trying to refine it to what it is right mm -hmm. now to show such a diverse nature of different skill sets, and maybe mm -hmm. that yeah. But I mean, this is about collaborating on us if there's a better program that can teach teach more and meet the objectives of diversified mm -hmm. skill set yeah i mean let's do it okay cool yeah i just wanted to see sort of what was what was up for discussion um yeah, yeah I think, I promised, because I think if, only thing is i promised basically i've been like whacking this around and you know feature creep and so forth and i told my uh, advisor or mentor on this okay if i'm gonna change anything i'm gonna let you know but this is fixed for now Oh sure, no, that's yeah, fine, yeah. and that kind of uh, you know, I mean, I would want to actually like run through this whole curriculum once before I try to tell you how to do it differently. Right, um, right. It's just super ambitious, but right. r really, I think more what I'm thinking of is uh, figuring out how to work it around people's schedules who are right. not going to have you know the nine days. consecutive days to do something like this. Yeah, that's uh, a big one. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like doing it as a ser like doing it as you know a month and a half of weekends or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Month and a half um, of weekends would do it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, That's yeah. Thought it, that would be the most practical if, if we did that. Yeah. So there might be um, two versions of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but that being said. Yeah. No, I think it's I think it's pretty amazing. Uh, Let's see. But so, in terms of your goals, yeah. Uh, right now, nothing can really happen until you collect the people that you need to really. Um, well, okay. Actually, let me, let me clarify this because I'm still a little unsure. So you have you have the the complete you know plans, bill of materials, etc., to make all of these things on your prior art list. What you're looking for here is people who can essentially like follow those plans and say, yes, I've built it, and here's actually some notes on how it works in real life, and I would feel comfortable teaching this. It's actually more, yeah. more part is integrating it into a coherent product set, because all those diver are diverse bunch of random projects. What we're talking about right. is an ecology of things that fit one into the other. So for example, the guy who's done the, done the plotter, he did not use mm -hmm. ramps or of the very basic universal controller kind of system nor the same axis that we do so his hardware is completely different we can use the pen but first we're going to need to do a mount that fits on our system and is also a mm -hmm. mount that can work for any tool head so the requirements are much more product ecology based got it i see okay yeah and that's the hard part and, uh, and i see got that, it that is the challenge okay here. But that's so not going to be able to do that crazy stuff in nine days because you're reusing everything. That's that's the trick to how you can do it. It's modular but designed to be together. Yeah, no, I mean, that makes perfect sense. Um, so then it sounds like what really needs to happen is that there's essentially an R&D period that has to occur before any yeah. instruction can happen. That's right. And, that's right. And so you need people who can kind of take these... Uh, take these systems and say, okay, here, this is how this is done. Mm -hmm. You know, this is how this was done in the past. But if we want to make this actually fit into the other things, then it needs to be done this way using this exactly. format or whatever. Yep. Uh, so, is there a budget for that? Uh, we're working on it. We're, I think, we're the the, the revelation from the last two or three weeks uh, is mm -hmm. probably yeah, we're going to have to put a budget to it. Yeah. We, we can say yeah. Yeah. I think so. yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, and I, I think uh, one thing that you might want to look at, if you haven't already, mm -hmm. is um, so so for the people, I, I think the people who are interested in uh, in 
being involved, you're going to have broadly two people. You're going to have, uh, you know, people who are like you know, full time professionals who are who are, have some brain cycles to contribute to the R and D, probably because they have you know a lab to work in anyway. Um, and then there's going to be people who are actually interested and available in teachers and are developing the content because that they'll be teaching. Uh, the ones who are teaching will also, you know, be eligible for making money off those classes. Mm -hmm. So one of the one of the things that you can do is say, okay, you know, normally it's a fifty fifty split to teach this class, mm -hmm. um, but to subsidize the R and D work that you're doing, we'll make it like seventy five twenty five split in your favor for the first you know five classes. Yeah. And that that's you know like that that extra twenty five times five is you know essentially like what we would be paying you for for R and D, but you know you take it off the back instead of the front. Mm -hmm. um, that won't work for everybody, uh, but it's it's a way for you to not have to pay quite as much up front, where people still feel like their 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 time is being valued. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I would I would like crunch the numbers on that and figure out. I'm just sort of throwing these off. Yeah, top of my no, head. that's um, that's right. You're right. Uh, yeah, and, and people sense. will still need something up front, um, but you can you can offset the upfront costs by by paying it off the back end. Yep. Yeah. I'll think about that. What would make sense there, based on our record. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, G from Megabots is spelled G U I. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Here, I'll, I'll I'll send you some links. These are people you should know. Um, do, do, what's his name? Do you have any time that you'd be available to actually, like, okay, if I gave you an outline of very specifics, so we're working on breaking this down, making it more clear for the task structure, um, would you be available to actually do that or get others to do it if there's a budget? Do, do you have the time for that right now or not a lot? Um, so, like I was saying, my, my time is... Uh, it's being juggled between a handful of things, uh, and the priority given to each thing is is primarily based on what pays me right now. Um, so I have I have really limited time for volunteer projects, but if there's actually any budget, um, I can definitely make time. Uh, I want to be, you know, for, for me, I'm very, how to put it, it's very important to me to not make any promises that I don't actually think I can keep. So. Uh, if I say yes to you about something, then I'm going to do it. So I'm going to be a little bit cautious about what I say yes to, until I'm like, yes, I can, I can make this promise and I will follow through. Uh, so I think I'll be better able to answer that question for you when you're like, this is the specific thing I want you to do, and this is how much budget I have for it, mm -hmm. or this is the arrangement that we're going to make in terms of you know how much you'll take off teaching on the other side. Like, I'm definitely interested. Yep. Uh, I just have to. This is how I have to allocate my time right now because I'm. I've been doing, you know, I've been doing nonprofit slash when I get paid stuff, but never getting paid for way too long, and it's it's hard being broke. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we kind of forgot about the product for the last decade ourselves, <laughs> about having a yeah, product. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um. <sighs> so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, given that, uh, I'm definitely going to talk to Echo, uh, who I just sent you the link to. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm sure Gee would be interested, but he's super busy because he's running his own robotic startup now. Mm -hmm. um, but Echo is actually like literally a like a maker skills teacher right mm -hmm. now, um, uh, and would be perfect for this. And and uh, so I'm going to talk to her. Yeah. Uh, I'll talk to David up in Portland, um, who's also someone you should probably know. You got a link for him? Yep, we don't know. 
Yeah, and you know, I, I know a lot of the folks at um, Maker Media or what's left of it. Uh, so I'm, I feel like there's because they're looking for jobs, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, one of the guys at the robotic startup that I'm working at he used to be at Maker Media. Um, so yeah, I think I think basically what needs to happen is mm -hmm. so there's. Uh, so the R&D process yep. uh, needs yep. to be fleshed out um, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and really kind of ex explicitly called out as like its own phase. Yep. Um, and it looks like you have you have a lot of that, a lot of those pieces laid out, but they they all need to be unpacked, and it needs to be clear, you know, mm -hmm. like which of those bubbles in the the purple slide um, are considered done or in process mm -hmm. or pending. Uh, you know, and, and try to get at least like a time estimate or a resource estimate on them. Yeah, yep. Um, that's that's you know, what I will do. Mm -hmm. Getting, a, getting uh, if you don't already have it, and I imagine you probably do, but getting um, like the, the, the bill of materials for each of those things uh, kind of packaged up so that when someone, so, so say someone comes along and they're like, okay, I will totally take on doing R&D for the circuit plotter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you want to be able to send them you know, a uh, a box in the mail, and you know, a link to a an online repo that between the two of them contains literally everything they need to get started, uh, and be able to kind of have those pretty ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, possibly, you know, you could also like you should also have a list online so that if they sign up for it, they're like, oh, I actually have most of this stuff. Just send me blank. Um, mm -hmm. That can be pretty easy, but. Uh, breaking it down on that level, and and I'll I'll try to start putting some stuff like that in the air table at least as placeholders, so you can kind of see that might be might make it easier to organize that information. Yep. Um, but yeah, so I would zoom out and be like, all right, phase one R and D broken out into you know circuit plotter, drone, three D printer, etc. Uh, and then here is the sort of sub steps to reach those things. Who can who's gonna take point on those? Mm -hmm. uh, and what do they need, and how can I get those you know resources to them, and then make sure that uh, and like I would build in a as you start getting that up and running, you start getting people putting their hands up. Yep. And I think as you as you define this more clearly and you put it in larger context, it'll be easier and easier to get people to sign on um, when people understand the context of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and then have. You know, uh, make up a couple different um, MOUs for people to, based on how they want to uh, work on it. If they want to work just as a, um, I guess I guess you could, you're probably going to have three kind of contributors. You're just going to have people who are like, I'm interested in contributing to this as an open source project. Uh, but I imagine you probably got most of those already because it's all, not a lot of people have the time and resources to do that pro bono. But you'll have any. Um, Likely the pro the problem with those people is that they are excited Schedule. to contribute, but they actually end up because because there's no formal relationship and you're not paying them and they're not as responsible to you, so they tend to not do what they say they're going to do. Unfortunately, um, second will be you know professionals who are like, yeah, I can put in some time, give me some money, and I will turn out a professional product for you. Uh, and then the third are the potential teachers who you can kind of um, you can subsidize their R&D off the back end so you can juggle your budget that way. Uh, but kind of let people know how, like, let people know in advance the ways that they can interact, what needs to be done, what the context is. Um, yeah, yeah. No, that's yeah. Uh, that's useful. You're, you're uh, 
definitely saying proposing some structure to this yet. That's what I do. Um, and then in the meantime, I'll I'll check and see where the the open know how kind of manifest format is, and see if that's something that would be useful to you now, or if that's something that kind of needs to get folded in later. Mm -hmm. um, as far as having like a you know a universal open source hardware framework to put on it, this would be a great project for that. Yeah. But I just don't know if it's if ready. Yeah, 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 and then keep evolving that till yeah you've got it nailed because it's um, going to be quite important for if we talk about the incentive challenge next year when you talk about right. a thousand people collaborating or a thousand yeah. five thousand that's going to be uh, part of that work needs to part of that leg work has to happen yeah uh, tell me about the so the Warsaw event was is there some Polish stakeholder that I should be knowing because you know I'm from Poland I was born there uh, oh cool you know that yeah. Um, I think I, I mean I saw it from your your TED talk. Yeah. Um, uh, no, actually, so it was it was in Poland really just because it was, convenient. Uh, it, was it was cheap and convenient. You know, most of the people that were involved were coming over from various places in Europe, mm -hmm. and of all the places in Europe where we could get you know a small conference center at a hotel mm -hmm. near a transit hub that was cheap, Warsaw was the the best bet mm -hmm. we had. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, yeah. No, no one there was from Poland, actually. Right. Uh, actually, no. There was, uh, though. Um, Pavel, who I know from Global Innovation Gathering, actually lives in Warsaw, so he came to visit. But, um, is Global Innovation yeah, that's... Gathering happening? Um, is that a regular event? Yeah. Uh, let's see here. There. Yeah, it's a pretty great um, conference series. Uh, you want this one? No, yeah, you got it. You got it? Okay. Yeah. Same, same like. Um, so let's see. What what other conferences are there that I that are regular that I should be going to? Like, do you go to Gosh? Uh, no. Though I've heard good things about it. What, um, else, what else is there besides Gig? Uh, that I so definitely this one. I'm just gonna send you a bunch of links. Okay. Uh, just yeah, into that. Mm -hmm. um, so June fifth to the seventh in Eugene. Yep. Okay. Let's see. Um, also, uh, let's see. There's also the Global Fab Foundation conference. Um, I guess Fab Fifteen was the one that just happened. Ah, uh, so Fab. Um, what do you think? I mean, is there any good yeah. stuff coming out of there? Or? Um, here we go. This is the one you want. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's some there's some amazing stuff that comes out of there. I think, like with any of these, there's you know, it's a huge range. It can be a lot of things. There's always there's always a whole bunch of, you know, okay, what the fuck is this? And there's always some really amazing stuff. But like, this is this is the event series that you know Neil Gershenfeld and Mm -hmm. Kind of his whole team has been putting out, Jerry Lasseter and everyone have been putting out for years. Um, what are they producing? Uh, like, you know, like on, um, I mean, some of these platforms, like, uh, for me, the, the fab thing, this is the idea that, okay, we could be making products in a significant way. Like, that's completely like, it seems like it's not on a agenda there. Or is it? No, I know. I, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of what the fab stuff does that I think is really misses the mark. But it's also a, a target-rich environment for people who are people—people uh, people who you could express to them what you're doing, and mm -hmm. you know. I mean, same with NomCon. Like any of these maker conferences or maker fairs or events or whatever. Like, yeah, you know, six, sixty percent of people there are, are just going to be like, I don't know. I learned how to you know three D print Star Wars figurines for my nephew. What else is there to do? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, or there are going to be people who are like, you know, running a makerspace in a library with a twenty dollars budget. Uh, you know, they're 
but yeah. for every one of those, there's going to be someone out there who is the exact person you need to meet. Like, I don't like going to conferences, but I have to do it a lot, and it's just a numbers game. It's like dating. Mm-hmm. You know, meet 100 people, and three of them will be the people that you actually need to talk to. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I strongly recommend uh, signing up in advance once, like, none of these events are happening soon, so, like, sign up's not going to happen for months, but uh, as as the like get onto the the mailing list for these events so that when they start and uh bringing on speakers you can sign up early to to do a workshop on what you're doing and get on stage and talk to people about it and then the people who want to know about it will find you is is the best way to do it that's that's how i've done it and i've i've met a ton of people that way Okay. Um, and and I don't know what experience you have running, you know, workshops or doing talks and stuff like this, but I'm happy to help with that if that's useful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Sounds great. Yeah. Uh, so I think I got plenty to do here. I think some clear tasks. Okay. And uh, by the way, Michel, the guy who's joining us here, so he's uh, one of our early developers, and he's working on like WebGL stuff and the universal axis. He actually mm-hmm. designed the first one, so he's well versed. And so we're actually going to talk about how to. He does some animations like Blender and WebGL stuff. So. We we'll talk about how to actually clarify this four-day thing because part of it is like maybe doing a short little video on it just to clarify what all the is and just download that to people because yeah, there's just too much information to communicate and want at once. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I, I, I definitely understand that there's that that problem of um, you know when you when you've been like eating and breathing yeah. uh, a certain information set for so long, like it's all in your head and so you can represent it in these incredibly information dense models and you're like, oh yeah, that's everything. Mm-hmm. But anyone who doesn't, who isn't already <laughs> sure. deeply familiar with this stuff looks at it and goes, oh God, I can't, what, what am I even looking at? Right. Um, so yeah, break, breaking it down into more bite-sized pieces. Yeah. yeah. Um, one other thing that might actually be really uh, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, what are they looking to do? I'll put this on your list. Uh, I assume you're familiar with the Precious Plastics people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Dave came down here once. Us. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say, like, that, as as far as uh, open source hardware ecosystems, you know, they're a fairly small one, but they are an ecosystem of open source, open hardware, open hardware machines. Um, and integrating with them, uh, would be a really good pilot project, and you could also and you would be able to tap into all the people who already know how to work on those machines, uh, as well as their pretty sizable um, kind of like public relations network because they're, they're fairly well heard of at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, what you're doing is definitely more advanced and more ambitious, but you know, if the goal is to build a fully open source ecology, then look for the other ones that are already starting and how to and integrate with them. Yeah. Uh, and I think, and like being able to say, like, okay, you know, we're going to source the plastic that we're going to use to 3D print this thing from recycled plastic. Like, how cool would it be to have the the participants in your uh, workshop come in and be like, all right, everybody, like, you know, bring a bag of, you know, uh, empty plastic bottles. Right. And we're going to build this shit. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who do you think has the most advanced? Uh, ex- extruder for filament making. We've done some of that. We used the Lyman filament extruder. We built that here. Uh, mm-hmm. We also built the precious plastic shredder. Um, but who do you think has the best one for the filament maker part? Mm-hmm. This is a yeah, project, Verba Wunder. It's going to contact those people. But yeah, stuff that actually works, like, yeah. Uh, that's got a com- at least any community or like de- developed recipes. Uh, that I couldn't tell you. Um, I, I've encountered a few, but I don't feel like I've 
uh, I wouldn't feel confident. I wouldn't feel confident speaking authoritatively on that subject. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm very curious to find out what the answer is, but I, I don't feel like I have it. Yeah, we'll see. I've got to get back to my other work. Um, uh, at some point, actually, when I think once uh, let's okay, so let's do two things. One, let's set up a call for maybe a week from now, kind of check in on on where things are at. Um, let's check in same time next Monday. Uh, yeah, let's do. Let's see. Actually, we can do even a little bit earlier, like ten thirty, just because. There's a lot to cover, and I usually try to uh, be the next thing by noon. Okay. Um, okay, September a.m. Monday? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll just put this uh, same, same link here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, cool. It's in my calendar. Um, and uh, then one other thing is once we get a little bit further along, in this process, there's another person that I'll introduce you to um, who's brilliant and really well connected and might be able to offer some more concrete help, but uh, because of the level she operates at, you know, we should kind of like come to her with something more concrete. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and that is my friend Sherry. Uh, no, us. Cherry Lassiter is, is brilliant, but good luck ever getting her to respond to an email. Mm -hmm. uh, Cherry Huss is on is on the board of MakerNet, uh, so I actually get to talk to her a little more often. But she's she's co founder of Maker Fair, uh, like former VP at Maker Media, um, and still kind of keeps her hand in with all of that. Um, nice. So, yeah. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Cool. Okay. Yeah, so let's uh, sit down and check in next week. I'll, I'll be working on it. The details will pass on what, what I have in terms of the clarification documents, so you're up to date on that. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Excellent. Um, yeah, this has been great. It's nice awesome. to meet you. Awesome. Awesome uh, to meet you. Uh, yeah, and uh, we'll keep talking and see what happens. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, looking forward to it. Okay. Thanks, Nate. Take care. Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. Michelle, you still there?